Hello and welcome. During this video, we are going to demonstrate some of the new features available in the latest HIL Control Center release, 2014.3. We will focus on new library elements and give you a brief overview of improved functionality inside our custom UI graphical testing environment. The model we are going to use today represents a small microgrid. It comes as a part of the latest software installation and, which is very important, it runs without any external control, so you can easily run it yourself with your 6 series Hill device. Before we run the simulation, let's browse through the model real quick. We can see that the model consists of two sources and two loads. On the source side, we have an engine generator model, a new library element, which is acting as a grid forming device. It is backed up by a constant power element that we are going to use as a source. On the load side, there is again constant power element, now used as a load, with defined frequency droop characteristics. In addition, there is also a passive non-linear load in the form of three-phase rectifier, where we can modify the load level on the fly by opening and closing the load contactor. We will measure grid line-to-line -line RMS voltages and RMS currents of both sources. Let's run the model compilation, and while it compiles, we will take a closer look to the engine generator element. The model behind is simplified, and only basic parameters are left to be set by user, like nominal power, voltage and frequency, initial frequency, and also some basic dynamics. Most of them are available directly from the GenSet datasheet. This makes the component ideal for system level studies and integration tests. In this model, we set the nominal power to 5 kilo and frequency to 50 Hz. Model is compiled, and before we proceed to HIL control panel to run the simulation, we can take a look into the compiler log and see that the electrical part of the model is going to run with half microsecond timestamp. Let's load the predefined settings file, undock the scope window, and run the simulation. We are able to manipulate the model and observe the effect. For example, if I increase the load level by setting the reference value for constant power load from 0 to 2 kW, we'll be able to see the expected frequency dip, or if I disconnect the rectifier, we can see the change in the load current as well as in the grid voltages. We could also notice the resulting frequency overshoot. However, in order to get the more convenient way of controlling the model and observing the results, we should switch to the custom UI tab. Here we can find a number of new elements and options available. One of them is a trace graph widget that I'm going to use to display grid frequency. On a double click, properties window pops up where we can set the name, select signal to display, define the update rate, write a custom expression, change the widget display settings and define plot parameters. As we are going to trace the frequency, we will set the Y axis range to go from 45 to 55. We also have the new LED widget available, where we can write a short custom expression like this one and use the LED to warn us if Greek frequency is outside the defined band. Now there is also an option to create a group of widgets. For example, I create a group called Frequency and move the existing widget to it with a simple cut and paste action. Note that all this can be done while the simulation is running. Now let's load the provided custom UI settings file. Here we are able to observe grid voltage and source current RMS values from the model, monitor grid frequency and status information from all the sources and loads in the model. We can also set and modify references for constant power load and source, connect or disconnect the rectifier, change its effective load resistor value and monitor the effects. All the data can of course be saved for further analysis. In reality, we can have our own converter model connected to the same grid and controlled by real external controller. So, if we are developing control code for critical power or power quality converter applications, a model like this will allow us to rapidly verify our controller behavior in numerous weak grid operating conditions. It is also the most convenient way to check our converter controller compatibility with many different gen sets in the comfort of our office. Thank you for watching the video. 
and enjoy all the new features inside the new release of Typhoon Hill Control Center.